right, the next example. Suppose that a glass of juice is at room temperature, and it's a cold room. Suppose it's room temperature is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. It's placed at a temperature at 1 p.m., so that's time zero. And again, that's important to remember. Uh, time somehow is hard for students sometimes, so to remember, time zero is 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. So the first hour that would go by would be from 1 to 2, so that would be time 1, it would be 2 o'clock. Time 2 would be 3 o'clock, time 4, so again, keep that in mind. Right. It's temperature X hours that it's been in the refrigerator. It's changing at a rate of, so this is how fast it's decreasing in temperature in degrees per hour over the first 10 hours. And I'm assuming after 10 hours it's leveled off and it's at the temperature it's going to stay at. It's become, it's reduced down to whatever the, the temperature of the fridge is. Show all work, including the integral used, by how much will the temperature change? from 1 p.m. to 5 a.m. So find the exact change. So again, keep in mind, 1 p.m. would be time zero, which means 5 p.m. would be four hours in the refrigerator, right? From 1 to 5, the glass of juice has been in the refrigerator for four hours. Right, so make sure you're careful that a lot of times students will do 1 and 5 instead of 0 and 4. So make sure you're careful there. So we want to find the change in temperature after four hours, right? From time zero to time four. Zero represents 1 p.m., four represents 5 p.m. So we're integrating from zero to four of my rate of change function, my change in temperature. Which, again, this one you could solve by hand or on the graphing calculator. At the very least, though, you have to show the integral. So this is what we want to solve. This is the, the fundamental theorem of calculus, the net change theorem. So I want to solve this integration and then how you solve it is up to you. You can solve it by hand. If you solve it by hand, show the general antiderivative and the numbers you get when you plug 4 in and the numbers you get when you plug 0 in and then the final number. If you solve it using your graphing calculator, you have to show the graph with the shaded area. All right, so if we graph this, and you do have to adjust your, uh, I believe a standard window might work, although you might have to go down a little below negative 10 because this starts out at negative 20. So you might make your window maybe go down to negative 20, right, which means I know the most of the area is going to be in the negative direction it is, right? It starts down here at negative 20 and then comes up and approaches the x-axis, right? That's the derivative function, the negative 20e to the negative 0.57x is what we've graphed there. That's the y value I plugged in. And then we integrate from 0 to 4. And so the low value is 0, the high value is 4. And so this would be the area that gets shaded in, which again, it should come out negative. It is a loss, right? The temperature is decreasing, so it makes sense that it comes out negative. This is negative 31.498. So it means the temperature change from time 0 to time 4 is negative 31. 0.498, which I might just run that the negative 31 and a half. All right, so the glass of juice will decrease. The glass of juice temperature will decrease by 31.5 degrees Fahrenheit from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Now, I didn't ask for it, but what would be the, the temperature of the juice? If we started out at 66 degrees Fahrenheit, it dropped by 31 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Well, you would take your 66 minus 31.5. That means the glass of juice is at 34 degrees, 34 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Again, I didn't ask for that, but just an FYI. At 5 p.m., the juice is at 34.5 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Because you take your 66 minus your 31 and a half. Again, I didn't ask for that, but that would be an initial value problem, how you'd solve it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the next one in this video instead of stopping it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the next one. All right, next example. Suppose that we're given the rate of change function that finds the rate that we memorize words per minute. So the derivative of words per minute given by that m prime of t function. Use that to figure out how many words can be memorized in the first 10 minutes, then the second 10. So there's two parts to this. All right, we have our first 10 minutes, which would be from time 0 to time 10, and then the second 10 minutes, and I'll do that separate. 
So the first one, we want to find the number of words that we memorize between 0 to 10. So we're integrating from 0 to 10 of that derivative, which again, you could solve this by hand. Well, this one's actually not too bad by hand. Or again, you can solve it on the graphing calculator. Again, make sure you show the picture of this. So this is the function you would graph. Um, I'm going to make sure my window is big enough. I know I'm going to go to the second 10 minutes, which means I'm going to go out to 20. And so when I make sure my window is big enough, I would probably make my x maximum 20 or 30 to go out. <clears throat> and so again, it starts at 0, right? Plug 0 in, starts at 0, and then it has this shape to it. When you plug it into your calculator, there's the derivative m prime of t. So the first one's finding 0 to 10. I'll shade the 0 to 10 area. Again, that solves this. That area equals 9. That comes out nice. And so this equals 9. And so that means they memorize 9 words <clears throat> in the first 10 minutes. All right, well now, what about the second half of that question? The second 10 minutes. So the biggest part about this one is to recognize what the second 10 minutes is. So the second 10 minutes is from time 10 to time 20, right? That's the second 10 minutes. So you don't start at 0. You're starting at 10 to the next 10, which would be 20. And so when we want to solve this, we want to know how many memorized words from 10 to 20, right? That, that 10 minutes. It's a different 10 minutes, and, and I'll probably get a different answer. So we're integrating from 10 to 20 of our derivative function, which, again, I can use the same graph I had up there. Um, I might hit regraph so it gets rid of the shaded area. This is why, again, I made my picture a little bigger last time. And so we would start at 10 and stop at 20. And so when we're integrating this function, this is the area that we want to find, right? We're going to integrate, <coughs> excuse me, my derivative, negative 0.003x squared plus 0.2x But this time I want this area, right? The area on the second. So be careful here. A lot of times students will go 0 to 20. And so just make sure you're careful on that case that you start at 10, stop at 20. Right? And the answer to that comes out 23. So you do. You learn more in the second 10 minutes than you did in the first. Now there's both 10 minutes, right? You're ten, spending 10 minutes memorizing. But maybe, again, for whatever reason, in the second 10 minutes you're a lot better. All right, so you learn 23 words in the 10 minutes from 10 to 20. Again, it's the same time, but it's different because it's a different 10 minute slot, right? You first 10 minutes, you only learn nine words. The second 10 minutes, you learn 23. All together, right? If we were trying figuring out all together, over the first 20 minutes, will you take your 9 plus your 23, right? And you learn 31 or 32 minutes, 32 words over those 20 minutes. All right, but I didn't ask for that, but that would be the case. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the last example because, again, these are fairly short. All right, so since the beginning of 2011, the number of subscribers to a city's major newspapers has been changing at a rate. So, again, there's my derivative in subscriptions per month. Approximately how many subscriptions the newspaper lose, right, because I know it's negative, so I'm losing, in the second six months of the year. All right, so again, up to the next year, which would be 2012. So remember, the time would be zero at the beginning of 2011. I want the second six months. So the second six months would be times six, which would represent my six months, up to the end of the year, which would be the 12th month. And so I'm looking for the number of subscribers lost from the 6th month to the end of the year, which is the 12th month. So from 6 to 12 is where we want to integrate. And again, sometimes that's hard. Some reason time is hard for students. So number of subscribers from month 12 
to month six. That's the difference that we want. So the integral we want to see is 6 to 12 of my rate of change function. All right, that's, again, you want to show that because that's what we're solving. I want to solve the net change from 6 to 12. I do that by integrating my rate of change function from 6 to 12. All right, and then I would say, uh, 14 instead of 1400. I would say, again, solve this graphically. Now, be careful. You will have to change your window. When you graph this function, 500 minus 1400, e to the negative uh, 0 to x, right? So you have to plug it in x. All right. You have to make the window bigger in both directions. In the x direction, because I go up to 12, I need to at least go beyond. So what I would probably do when I do my window here, I'd probably make my x maximum 15. Right, I'd probably leave it negative 10 just so I can see my whole integral. But my x maximum, I would probably make 15, so I go a little bit beyond my 12. My y, again, based on the numbers, I know that this is in the negative direction. I actually start out at negative 900. Right? When I plug 0 in, this becomes 1. And so it's 500 minus 1400, so I start out at negative 900. And so my, y, my minimum... I would probably set to negative 900. I'd probably still leave it positive 10. So those are the, so that's my y min. So those are the two things that I would change when I adjust my window. X goes out to 15. Y goes down to negative uh, 900 because that's kind of my starting point. And then you should get a fairly decent looking graph. And you do it comes out like this. There's my deriv there's my derivative functions graph. Shade in 6 to 12, right? So 6 to 12 would be this region, which again, it does come out negative. It's a fairly big negative. Negative 4,020.48 would be the area. And so n of 12 minus n of 6 equals, and again, since I'm talking subscribers, which would be people, I'm going to round to the whole person instead of the fraction. So I'm going to round to 4,020 subscriptions. Negative. So it'd be a loss. So again, over the second six months, they lost, since it's an approximation anyway, I'll probably use the word about 4,020 subscribers to the newspaper. <coughs> Roughly. Excuse me, my allergies are really bothering me right now. All right, so that finishes up the net change theorem, applications of the antiderivative. All right, we'll stop there.